So here is a really easy way to determine the electrochemically active surface area of your electrode. The way that uh, is my favorite way to do it, um, which is using a redox probe. And so um, what I typically mean by that is if I'm in aqueous solution, uh, the molecule I typically use is going to be potassium ferrocyanide. Now you got to um, know the redox potential of this and make sure that um, you know, this is a reversible redox system and that this is not interfering with your chemistry in any way. That's not overlapping with your, you know, other parts of your CV that you may want to look at. But usually what you're going to be doing is uh, putting your electrode in a solution of this. So this is for aqueous because this is uh, soluble. Okay, it's an ionic compound. For non-aqueous, uh, usually I use ferrocene. Okay, again, we're just using a reversible, completely reversible uh, redox probe here, going between iron two and iron three in both the cases. And the idea is that first you're gonna test your uh, redox probe on a flat electrode. So let's say you have um, a, a gold surface and then you have another electrode that's a bumpy gold surface. Uh, and what you're gonna do is you're going to measure a CV in something like 100 millimolar KCl, that's gonna be your supporting electrolyte, just an example. You could use potassium perchlorate. Um, and then like one millimolar of this redox active probe. In non-aqueous, you're probably gonna have to use something that's soluble. So if you let's say you're in, uh, I don't know, dichloromethane, you might wanna use a uh, hundred millimolar tetrabutylmonium fluoride and one millimolar uh, ferrocene. So something analogous, but just with you know soluble things. So the hundred millimolar is your background supporting electrolyte. And you're gonna do the same experiment either way. This is your solution that you're gonna use for both of these experiments. And you're gonna run a CV. And in both cases, you're gonna get a nice duct shaped CV. Um, and your flat electrode is gonna look like that. And then your bumpy electrode is gonna look similar, but it's gonna have um, more peaks, or bigger peaks, right? This is uh, voltage versus current. So your current is gonna be bigger on your bumpy electrode. And the whole idea here is then you're just gonna integrate the area uh, under your bumpy peak, and you're gonna integrate the area under your flat peak. You can do it for both the cathodic and anodic, anodic waves, and then sort of take the average. Um, but the idea here is that uh, you're using your flat as sort of your standard, and you're gonna assume that your flat electrode, um, flat electrode has a flat electrode ECSA, electrochemical active surface area, uh, is going to be uh, equal to the geometric area. If you don't wanna assume that, you could also uh, use AFM or some sort of other technique to actually directly measure the surface area of the electrode and assume that the electrochemical active surface area is equal to the actual surface area that measured using AFM atomic force microscopy. Um, but this is your standard, basically, your flat electrode. And then you're gonna say, hey, whatever my um, flat area electrode is, I know that my uh, bumpy area electrode electrochemical area is just equal to um, this charge that I integrate under here. Um, so the area under this curve, and assuming these are under the same scan rates, you don't even have to actually calculate charge by dividing my scan rate. You can just look at the relative areas, um, but it would just be equal to this charge of bumpy over charge of flat. So this red area divided by the blue area, if this red area was twice as big as this uh, black area, sorry, not blue area, red, it was twice as big as this black area, um, then you'd get that, hey, my bumpy electrode is twice the area 
of the flat electrode in terms of its electrochemically active surface area. The really nice thing about this is that um, because it's using a redox probe, um, you know, and you're using an electrochemical way of measuring this, you know that the sites that you're probing are electrochemically active. So um, I really like using this method. You do have to worry that, you know, if this was, let's say, copper, and you do this experiment, if you don't have the redox probe with the right uh, potential, you might not be able to do this experiment without dissolving the copper, you know, electrochemically stripping, oxidizing the copper to copper two plus. And so then, you know, everything's gonna not make sense because you're gonna get this extra peak due to copper on top of your, your ferrous, uh, ferrous ionide wave that you're trying to use. So you just have to pick the right redox probe. There's other ones you can use with different potentials, such as ruthenium, hexamine, and lots of other ones. Um, but this general strategy is very powerful.